Welcome into 49ers Access. My name is Sterling Bennett, and today we're going to preview the San Francisco 49ers Super Wild Card Weekend victory over the hated, the dreaded Seattle Seahawks 41 to 23 as Brock Purdy, yes, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, gets his sixth consecutive victory and wins his first career playoff game. So without further ado, let's dive into what exactly happened on Saturday as the NFL playoffs kicked off in Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, between the San Francisco 49ers and the Seattle Seahawks. Coming into this game, what was the conversation? For me, for us, it was San Francisco should win this game by at least 10, 13 points. They should take care of business, but, but there is always that factor, divisional game, and it's Pete Carroll and that gum-chewing piece of you-know-what, and it's the Seattle Seahawks. Something crazy always seems to happen when San Francisco plays the Seattle Seahawks, and by all means... Let's talk about exactly what was going a little crazy in that first half. So the first half starts, and I think everybody and their mother would have said, we can rationalize there might be some early jitters from Brock Purdy. You are the first playoff game. It's your first playoff game for Brock Purdy. And there might be some throws you miss. Well, let's just hope you can keep those to a minimum. No interceptions, no turnovers. If you can somehow, some way fight through those jitters, you'll come out cleaner on the other side. And by all means, there were some jitters. It seemed like early in this game, I wouldn't quantify it as rattled, but it did it did seem like that Brock Purdy knew he was playing in a playoff game, but almost like he knew he was playing in a playoff game. It didn't bother him too much, but he still knew he was missing throws. Like there were throws in this game where he was either forcing them in the tight windows or or we've seen him make those throws in the past five, six weeks. That being said, it's not like the whole team wasn't having those jitters, right? The first drive of the game, Javon Kinlaw and Eric Armstead make their presence known. Kinlaw stuffs Walker. Armstead gets the sack. We're feeling pretty good, right? Feeling pretty great. All right, cool. The defense is already setting the tone. Then Purdy hits a 20-plus yard pass to Ayuk on second down. But then he misses Jennings in the end zone. You know, maybe could have lofted that ball a little more. Then Debo Samuel does his thing, gets you a first down. Then Purdy over the middle has to miss communication, it kind of seemed like, and that drive ends with the field goal. Then, okay, field goal, 3 nothing, no big deal, right? You have points on the board. Your defense has already done their job. The defense continues to do their job. Tayshawn Gibson, Tayshawn Gibson, excuse me, has a great play on third down, forces Seattle, after returning the ball to near their own 40-yard line, on a three and out. The defense is playing great. The offense just needs to get into the end zone. You're already up 3 nothing. Then boom. I believe on the first play, if not second play of their second drive of the game, Trent Williams, Kyle Juszczyk open up the hole. Christian McCaffrey says, buh bye buh bye 68 yards down the field, then a check down to Elijah Mitchell from, from Brock Purdy, then a CMC touchdown. It seemed like when you're up 10 to nothing, Purdy looks poised in the pocket, does a little shimmy, hits a check down, a little sidearm second baseman throw, going for a double play. Like, everything looks like it's aligning for San Francisco. You're up 10 to nothing. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, okay, this is where Seattle gets desperate. This is where they take their shot. They have to. They cannot allow an elite team, a really good team like San Francisco, take a two-score lead. They are never going to get that back. And lo and behold, what does Seattle do? Take a deep shot towards the left side. Lenore's in coverage. He does a really good job. And I was like, okay. Like we, the weakness that I thought I was going to worry about was Lenore against DK Metcalf. What does he do? He was great in coverage. He was really good in coverage on that deep ball throw. Okay. Okay, cool. The weakness I circled and said, that might be a problem. Well, when that came to fruition, it wasn't that big of a deal. That Lenore stood up to the opposition, right? 
then you can see things start to roll with Gino, right? He has that running play, or it's read option. Then he hits DK on a slant on Mooney Ward for a first down. Then they get another good play. And you go, okay, like they're starting to feel something here. Like their offensive engine starting to get rolling here for Seattle. Then all of a sudden, they start establishing the run. Kenneth Walker is doing his thing. It's a huge, huge drive for Seattle. They go down 14 plays, 78 yards, take six plus minutes off the clock. And what do they do? They make it 10 to 7. They send a message to San Francisco and say, hey, we know you are the quote unquote better team. We know you are the two seed. We know you came into our house wearing those all white 1994 throwback jerseys. Your color rush jerseys came into our house with your seventh round Mr. Irrelevant pick. And what did you do? You took that NFC West championship from us. They said, we are not going anywhere. 10-7. to 7, One of the biggest drives of the game early. Early in this game, one of the biggest drives. San Francisco needs points. You're hoping seven. How do you respond to what Seattle just did? They just got themselves back in the game. How do you respond? Touchdown or field goal? Again, for the second time in this game, Purdy hits Ayuk for 20 plus yards. Then he has a scramble. Then he tries for a deep shot down, feels for Ayuk, and he kind of stopped. Then you, you can see Purdy go, Brandon! Brandon! And he had Debo open under the middle or 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 on the on the on the flat. And you're like, like, okay, you took a shot. I'd rather you take that shot than not take it. But sometimes you just have to take what the defense gives you, and they had Debo Samuel open for like 45 yards with room to run under or in the flat over the middle. Then it's Kittle over the middle for a first down and some yak. Then it's RPO to McCaffrey on a slant. And you go, okay, we're feeling pretty good, right? Then they have this weird failed screen pass where you're like, there's no one to throw to. Purdy takes the sack. They get a drop play. Field goal. Okay, we are three drives into this game. And it's 13-7. to And I'm sitting here saying, okay, that's weird, but all right. Then Seattle says, we tried our shot in the last drive. Let's take our shot now. Boom. 50-yard touchdown pass to DK Metcalf over Mooney Ward. Okay? That right there was the turning point for Seattle. That right there kind of kicked off the chain of events that leads into the second half of like, oh my god, like, are we going to lose this game? Are we going to somehow, someway find ourselves in the midst of trouble? Like, this may not end well for San Francisco. And I'm sitting here saying, look, like, Mooney Ward locked down DK Metcalf early <laughs> in the season. Seven targets, five catches, 38 total yards, two pass breakups. I rattled off those same stats to you and said, he is not going to be a problem. If you're going to worry about anybody, it's going to be about Diamador Lenore. Well, lo and behold, the all or the top cornerback is signed in free agency who's been money all year long. Mooney has been money all year long. Struggled mightily in this game. Seattle's leading now 14-13, to and again, the question becomes, how do you respond? Three and out. Now, this right here to me was, okay, if you're going to struggle, you can struggle, but what you can't do is make dumb mistakes, have that one bad drive in a bad situation, or it's a turning point in the game. Seattle has scored two touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives, instantly and quickly got themselves back in this game and San Francisco responded with a field goal in a dud. You can't do that. Thankfully, Mitch Wisnowski earning that contract extension has a great punt, a great gunner tackle by Danny Gray, great stuff there. Okay. We're going into halftime. Right? Not feeling great or, or, or about to go into halftime, excuse me. You get three and out, Shanahan calls timeout, okay? There's one minute on the clock. And for the third time in this game, 
Brock Purdy hits Ayuk over the middle for like 30 yards. And I'm saying, well, that's, I mean, that play works every single time. Why are we calling anything else? That play works every single time. Then they have Debo playing decoy on screens. Then Purdy misses Jennings over the middle, almost picked off. Then Debo Samuel says, I'm a dog, gets a big first down. Then you have a timeout. But then it seemed like like early in this game, one of the things that has haunted Kyle Shanahan has been clock management, right? Getting out of the huddle too slowly, burning timeouts, not using timeouts when you should. And early in this game, a lot of the conversation really was surrounded Kyle Shanahan. It was, are the issues that have haunted you in the past couple times you've been in the playoffs, are those things going to be consistent in this game? Because right now in the first half, we're sitting here, and it's 14-13, and we're like, what the heck is going on? Okay. They go down. Purdy goes down there, throws the ball away. They get a field goal. They're up 16-14. Great. Great. There's 13 seconds on the clock. 13. Not 12. Not 14. 13 seconds. And you're thinking, okay, Seattle has three timeouts. What would you do if you're Kyle Shanahan? Do you, A, kick the ball into the end zone or in front of the end zone, just in front of it? Hopefully stop them somewhere between 25 for a touchback or in between 30 and 35 if they happen to return it for a larger return. Or do you, B, do you squib it and you give them the ball at the 40-yard line? I mean, what what is that? So he squibs it. And you're sitting there like, okay, so now Seattle has the ball three timeouts, nine seconds. They at least have an opportunity to either, if not take one shot, take two shots. They can at least put themselves in field goal range, and they can retake the lead or get a field goal. Like, what the, like, like, like what, just the squib alone. Why is that the choice? It's the little stupid stuff like that that loses you a game, right? And it's the first half, there's a whole half to go. I get that. But it's like, football is a game of inches, game of points, and in a game that close where it seems like Seattle is not going to back down. Imagine that's Philadelphia. That's the Vikings. That's the Cowboys. That's the Buccaneers. That's the Bengals, Chiefs. Like, it's small stuff where, hey... If that's the fourth quarter, I'll be you might not choose to do it then. That'll cost you a game. But the squib wasn't bad enough. Then Jimmy Ward says, I'm a big guy. I like to hit quarterbacks when they're falling down and sliding. Like, why are we playing unsmart, undisciplined football? A veteran safety. Someone that I can proudly say is a good player. Has been really good for us this year. Someone that has proven to be a veteran leader on this team. Someone I can point to and say, wow, they're a team player. And it's not like he hasn't done this before, though. I believe it was Jimmy Ward last year in the NFC Championship game because he needed to get that hit on OBJ. And I'm not sure what the thought process was. Are you trying to send a message? Are you trying to say, hey, Geno Smith, don't run on me. Well, hey, it cost you 15 yards, and if it was late in the game, it would have cost you the freaking game itself. Like, I don't want to be negative. San Francisco won this game 41-23. to Brock Purdy played amazing in the second half. The offense put up 500 yards. The offense scored the most points they've scored all year long. They beat the Seattle Seahawks three times in a row. I don't want to complain. And we'll get into the second half here, but the first half cannot be ignored, right? Am I worried? Not really. In my heart, I, I question because I I struggle with this. I see some of the issues. Mooney Ward was not great in this game. The secondary getting deep has or getting beat deep has been a problem as of recently. Hufunga was kind of a nowhere near to be found today, but he wasn't awful. And it's usually, he's the guy I point to and go, that was his fault. Today was our top cornerback's fault. And I go, oh, well, what is Justin Jefferson going to do? What is Thielen and Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and C.D. Lamb and all the, all, and all the other top guys? What is, I don't know, Jamar Chase, like, if we get that far, going to do against him? 
And I asked myself, should I worry about that stuff? But I sit back and I go, you know what, Sterling? The team scored 41 points in the past. They may not have been able to overcome stuff like that. And I can honestly tell you, the last thing on my mind was, what dumb thing is Kyle Shanahan going to do? Like, he has been in that good of the graces. <laughs> like, Kyle Shanahan has really, and again, I, I think this year has been the most pro-Kyle season ever. Like, there has been little scrutiny of him outside of Trey Lance's injury, right, and the early struggles. Since Jimmy Garoppolo became the quarterback post-week four, or his play post-week four, post-Chiefs game, 10-game winning streak, now 11 games, there hasn't been too much to complain about, right? It's been, wow, Kyle's great. So I wasn't thinking, how is he going to mess this up? But it was like, wow, somewhere, some way, somehow, that stuff is still in you, Kyle, to do something stupid like that. And fans were irate. I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, what are we doing? Like, there, there are very little time times in games where I sit back and I go, what, what are we doing? Why are we doing that? Like, this isn't a, a Jarek McKinnon direct snap in Seattle with a, a bum foot Jimmy Garoppolo. That ain't it. No. That's a, what are we doing? Jimmy Garoppolo stepping out of the back of the end zone in Denver. That's a, what are we doing? Shanahan's not really gotten that this year. It's been, <laughs> keep doing that. Yes, please keep doing that stuff. But in this game, in that first half, it was like, hey, Kyle. Why are we scooping the football? Hey, Jimmy Ward, why are you hitting the quarterback when he's sliding? Like, it's stuff like that that makes me go, ah. Like, th there is still a small tidbit of my worst own, or my own worst enemy in this team. In that, by a very small smidge, and it's that smidge is so small, it, it is a one point, three points of the 43 they scored, 41 they scored today <laughs> against Seattle, right? It's very small, but there is a little bit there. And so going into halftime, it was okay. Like, now you don't have the lead. How are you going to respond? What is that conversation like at halftime? Are they mad? Are they angry? How does San Francisco, knowing they gave, handed over, just like Judas to the priests, that wanted to kill Jesus Christ himself. Here's your 13 shackles, Judas. Be my, here's your piece of silver, right? That's what it was like. Okay, thanks. We'll take momentum. And they did. How are you going to respond? Are you going to lie down and die? Are you going to let Pete Carroll's gum-chewing dentures affect you? Or are you going to go, we have Christian McCaffrey and Nick Bosa and Fred Warner and Jimmy Ward, albeit he's hurting or trying to hurt quarterbacks in this game. We have Brock Purdy and Kittle and Ayuk and Debo. How are you going to respond? What did they do? And I can honestly say this, that just like San Francisco allowed Seattle to take momentum, San Francisco saw an opening because Seattle wanted to play dumb and play foolish and piss off Debo Samuel and they ripped it right out of Seattle's hands. First drive, second half, what do they do? Kittle over the middle, big play. Purdy to, to Debo in the flat, breaks three tackles, big first down, there was third and seven. Then what does Jonathan Abram, former Raider, do? He tries to twist Debo's ankle. I don't think it was to hurt him, but the game was physical. Divisional opponent, it's a, it's a dumb player doing dumb stuff, right? What does he do? Debo's like, what the heck, man? The cut to like a weird non-commercial commercial break. We come back and the entire team's on the field. Sh Sh Shanahan's cursing the refs like, you mother, you have a bunch of BS and whatever, right? And at that moment, right there, you can instantly see the shift in San Francisco. It was, oh, okay. Like, we came into this game with the thought we could annihilate you. Okay, we were playing coy, playing dumb. Things weren't going our way early. We made some mistakes that opened the door for you. Well, guess what? You're in our house, and you're starting to, to piss on the walls, right? And if you're a dog, 
What do you do with a dog that pisses on the walls and the couch and the furniture? You take him outside and you lock him outside. You say, no, 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 no. You're not going to come into my house, break my rules, and take over. I am the boss. I am the one that decides when you get to come back inside. I am the one that gets to choose when you eat. And I'm also the one that chooses your punishment. And San Francisco said, and look, I'm a dog lover. I love dogs, so don't get it wrong here. But San Francisco said, I am going to lock you outside in the cold. You are not going to eat your food. And we're going to send you on a one-way trip back to Seattle with every single one of your feathers plucked out of your wings. And San Francisco at that point said, you want to play? I can play too. QB sync touchdown. And then after that, it was all San Francisco, right? Seattle said, we still have a chance, right? Ooh. What did Charles and Enhue do? Missed the sack earlier. He gets the big strip sack. Bosa gets the recovery. Game on, game freaking over. At that point, San Francisco saw the opportunity to attack, to clinch, to push their jaws on the neck of the Seahawks. Big pass to Jennings in between two defenders. Great throw by Purdy. And then all of a sudden, this game became the Brock Purdy show, right? This game in that third, around the late third quarter, early fourth quarter, this game became the Brock Purdy show. Brock Purdy finished 18 for 30, 332 yards, four total touchdowns, 131.5 rating, and an 89.5 QBR. Those stats do, despite them being great, do not tell exactly how good Brock Purdy was in that second half. There are a handful of plays you can point to and say, oh, oh my God. For all the jitters in the first half, for the concerns of, you know, I don't know, it's the playoffs, big game, Seattle, third time, I don't know, anything go crazy. Brock Purdy said, "Uh uh-huh, okay. Like, Like, that worries you? Watch this. Watch me take your concerns and shove them right back down your throat. And and look, that doesn't mean the concerns shouldn't have been there. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't have said, no, I'm just not sure. I was someone who openly said, how far can a seventh round last pick in the draft, Mr. Irrelevant, take you? I didn't know. I said, I mean, really? He's not Jimmy G. He ain't a first round pick. Why did 32 teams pass on him six times? Many of them, more than you know, more, more than the allotted picks, right? But guess what? Brock Purdy said, I don't care where I got picked. I don't care what round, the exact pick, what college I went to. I don't care. Oh, I was the third string quarterback, and then I was the backup, then I was the starting quarterback. It doesn't matter to me. None of it matters to me. Brock Purdy in this game looked like the most poised quarterback in the pocket San Francisco has had since maybe Steve Young. If you want to say, don't forget Jeff Garcia, prime Jeff Garcia in 2001, 2002, and that's a stretch. And I like Jeff Garcia, but I mean, come on. He has been more poised than Kaepernick in the pocket and Smith in the pocket and Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, Brock Purdy was doing elite quarterbacking in this game and I don't want to get too far ahead and and, and make this kid seem like he's next coming of Jesus Christ himself but look I mean he looked like Brett Favre and some fans may say he almost threw four interceptions and I don't care who cares someone almost threw four interceptions like many fans thought and and I do get this train of thought of, you know, that Raiders game, that Commanders game, you know, maybe they should have lost the game along the way to kind of, you know, reset themselves. And I said that Raiders game was as close as you can get to losing a game, but still winning and still being able to kind of check yourself before the playoffs happen.
That was the best case scenario. Second seed still in play, right? Get the win, but you struggle enough to go, okay, we have things to fix. Some fans said, I hope Brock Purdy struggles or at some point in this 10-game window here, six-game window he's had, I hope he struggles so he can see how he bounces back. Well, if the first half of this game was the struggling, which it was not his fault his team lost the lead, that would be Ward and Shanahan, right? Then the second half was him kind of fighting through the struggle and coming out better on the other side. I mean, my God. My God. There was a play in this game where he rolls to his left, escapes some pressure, and finds Elijah Mitchell just standing wide open on the right-hand side of the field, and he just walks in for a touchdown. It was like, what the heck was that? He ran from one hash mark to the other hash mark and said, oh, you're open. You're wide, you're wide open. <laughs> okay. Then he has some play action to Debo, and then Kill has a great block. Like, what Brock Purdy did in this game is what Kirk Cousins and Daniel Jones and Trevor Lawrence, like, the guys who you think, or, excuse me, the guys who are in the playoffs this year, there's only about four of them that can do what Brock Purdy did today. And those guys are Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Joe Burrow. And on a really good day when Brandon Staley is in his bag, which isn't often, Justin Herbert, maybe. And it's no knock on anybody else. That's just a fact. Oh, and and Jalen Hurts, obviously. Right? Like, all of those guys have been in or are currently in the MVP conversation. Now, I'm not saying priorities MVP, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is here, the traits that he possess. Like, he, he's like, there, there's a difference in maneuverability, mobility, right? There's like, one player can be as mobile as another player, but it's the way they do it that makes it seem so much nicer, so much better. It makes it look like it's coming from this natural, like, physical ability, right? And and Brock Purdy does things silky smooth. I mean, he, like, his nickname should be Silk. Everything seems so fluid and smooth, like... I love Garoppolo. I think he's a good quarterback. He's a great person. He's a good leader. He is, he was, and is, and has been instrumental in not just this year for San Francisco, but the past four seasons here, right? One healthy, good quarterback. Brock Purdy has looked at everything Jimmy Garoppolo has done and said, I can do all of that better. Maybe the only area, only area Brock Purdy's not better than Jimmy in is maybe the timing. Like, there were times in this game where the timing was just off. Brock Purdy made some throws where we were like, ooh, hey, don't do that. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, there was a play where he forced from the Debo, you wanted Jennings, and you're like, huh, maybe, maybe he is a rookie for a reason, right? This is his first playoff game, you know, that's to be expected. But later in the game, like, there was a play to Brandon Ayuk, again, similar to the touchdown to, to, to Mitchell, runs to his left, avoids some pressure, runs all the way to his right, and on the move, hits Ayuk in the back of the end zone. Now, he dropped it, but it was like, what the heck was that? Like, that's some burrow stuff. That's some Mahomes, Josh Allen. Like, that's like top six quarterback stuff right there. Like, my God. Now, yes, you would like Brock Purdy to be better in the first half. But if the second half is what's to come in other games, uh, hello, NFL. Like, my, I have more concerns about the defense who is still number one, who had two takeaways in this game, than I am the offense. The defense gave up 23 points. You can blame the field goal, or three of them, on Ward and Shanahan. 
And you could also say DK's deep shot over Mooney Ward may have been an outlier. Ten of their points could be erased. The defense could have, again, could have is a you know big word there, given up, what, 13 points? 10 points in this game? And I would still tell you, I am more concerned about the defense than I am the offense, and the defense is the number one ranked defense in football. Football. And look, and maybe it's because the offense has Christian McCaffrey, who gets 17 touches for over 130 yards, and has one touchdown. He was money, 68-yard huge run, explosiveness in an instant. He averaged almost 8 yards, 7.9 yards on the ground. Like, what? And then Debo Samuel. As soon as Debo got pissed off after the Abram weird ankle crap he was doing, Debo Samuel touched the ball just nine times. Nine times. He had 165 yards. He averaged 22.2 yards a catch. 10.7 yards a carry. He had a 74 yard play in this game. And the best play of the game to me wasn't breaking seven tackles. But he did that. His best play was a play action rollout where he breaks at 70 plus yards for a touchdown. Because in that play, like, you can tell that this offense has missed Debo Samuel despite scoring 33 points in every game Brock Purdy has been the quarterback in besides one. This offense missed, misses, has missed Debo Samuel. He, when he was running on his big touchdown run, he kind of waited, was patient. Okay, Kittle has that block, Ayuk has that block, and he hit the freaking nitrous. Like, he hit the Jets. He was like freaking Vin Diesel in Fast Five, right? He was just, boom, boom, gone. I mean, G-O-N-E, gone. Nobody was going to touch him. I have never seen Debo Samuel run that fast my entire life. Entire life. It was like, wow, <laughs> okay. He went to fourth gear real quick. It was like the dog that is looking at his food bowl. The bell rings. Ding, 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 ding. All right, dinner's ready. All of a sudden, you hear the, oh, 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 and it's that, oh, it's that dog running from the field saying, dinner, dinner. It was Debo yelling, end zone, end zone, end zone. He was not going to stop. I mean, this offense scored the most points they have all year in round one of the playoffs against the Seattle Seahawks, who they beat for the third time this year. Brock Purdy, for the first time in his NFL career, played a defense for the second time. And he played 10 times better against them this time. They had more tape against him. And he said, okay, that means absolutely nothing. Your scheme, your game plan, kaput, finito, ripped it up, threw it in the fireplace and said, wow, Ooh, it was cold out there for us. It was raining. Wow. Your game plan sucked. Now I'm burning it to keep myself warm because I'm so good. And I have Debo and I have Ayuk, who are all great in this game. And I have McCaffrey, who was great in this game. The offensive line, I mean, clap it up. You were great in this game. Great. In like, that second half was honestly a perfect half for San Francisco. 25 points, two takeaways, and it seemed like they could have kept going. Teams should be mortified to play this offense. You know Brock Purdy? This was his first 300-plus yard game in his career. It, <laughs> it's just so funny to me. He had the most passing yards since Joe Montana did in Super Bowl 23 against the Bengals. Not Jimmy, not Cap, not Smith, not Steve Young, not Garcia. Not in more pass-friendly systems with, I can argue, maybe better weapons. Jerry Rice, Terrell Owens, 
I can keep going, right? And I can't help but laugh because it's not like the team as a whole played a perfect game. Yes, one perfect half. I can argue maybe their best half of the season in a playoff game. And I think there's room for improvement. I don't think the defense left this game saying, wow, we played perfect. I don't think the offense did it either. But I think if the defense can tighten the screws, and look, some people will say, that first half is not going to fly against Philadelphia, the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals, maybe even the Vikings, the Cowboys. That first half may not fly against better opponents. I get that. You win the argument. You're not wrong. But guess what? Just like the person that will complain, Brock Purdy almost threw three interceptions. Yeah, and Seattle almost won in the first half. Almost doesn't matter to me. And I do believe in this team. I don't think a team like San Francisco with this personnel and this roster and that coaching staff that has a head coach that he knows if he don't get it done, there will be many fans, not this one, hopefully not you, but many fans saying, get him out of here! How many opportunities do you get? And I would say third string quarterback, you know, plenty more to come. (laughs) And you have a defensive coordinator who might be gone by the end of the year. You have a team who's getting older, albeit plenty of young players that continue playing here. It's not like they're ancient. But Trent Williams, Fred Warner, Jimmy Ward on the last year of his deal, right? You have older players here that want that ring. George Kittle, he's almost, I think he is 30. The core guys are getting a little older. But I think the defense wasn't great in this game. Fred Warner wasn't good in this game, from what I can tell, at least early, right? Missed plenty of assignments, plenty of coverages that he would normally do. Mooney Ward wasn't great. I think the defensive line, I don't know the pressure total, but it wasn't great until the second half. There was a few plays early, but Seattle had things rolling for a hot second. The difference is, is that this team, the way they play football, it's it's almost like... Not that there isn't any give up, or, but it's almost like every game you're just waiting for the explosion to happen. I'm like, okay, they're not playing great now, but give it two more minutes, then they'll come alive and put up 40 points against you. Like, this team has scored at least 37 points in the last four games. They've won 11 games in a row. 11! Folks, this team, to win everything, has to win 14 straight games. They are the first team in the playoffs, albeit because scheduling, (laughs) but the first team to clinch their spot to the divisional round. We have no idea who they're going to play. I do think the defense must improve, but let's sit back here, let's relax, and I'll whisper, I think the offense is so good. It may not matter how bad the defense plays. Like this offense here, can go toe-to-toe against the Bengals, against the Chiefs, against the same team that put up 44 points against the number one defense in football, be it they were hurt, but they scored 44 points. And even in that game, it was a touchdown difference going into the fourth quarter. And this offense... Ain't that offense, it's better. This defense, ain't that defense, it's better. This offense here, the whole time, it's been, I'm not sure if they can hang around with the Chiefs. How long until Mahomes explodes? I don't know if they can stop Josh Allen. Those questions are valid. Those questions will still come up no matter how far this team goes. Rightfully so. But let me tell you something. This offense 
can hang around with the top offense in the NFL. Whoever you want to put there. And I can argue this is the top offense in football. May not be the best quarterback, but it sure as heck is the best running back. I can argue a top five receiving tandem. One of, if not the best tight ends in football. A top 10 offensive line. And I'm telling you, the best play caller in the NFL. This offense can hang around. They proved that today. Now, it might not be 41 next week. I get it. It might not be 37 next week. But I guarantee it'll be 33. (laughs) I guarantee you, no matter if it's Dallas or the Buccaneers, who they've already beaten once this year, or if it's the Vikings, or if it's the, the, the Giants, this offense should be just as scary as the defense. And everyone's talking about Brock Purdy, and I get it, so am I. But right now, San Francisco is 14-4 and four on the year. You want to know why? Number one defense. They deserve credit. A lot of it. I mean, my God. They have the sack leader, the eventual defensive player of the year, Nick Bosa. And if he's not, I'm going to freaking riot. But they also have the offense that has accumulated the most offensive weapons in football. Name one offense that has CMC, Elijah Mitchell, Devo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. I can't name one. Most teams have one, maybe two stars. The Vikings, Jefferson, and Cook. Okay. I'm not not counting quarterbacks here. The Chiefs have Kelsey and maybe Juju Smith-Schuster. The Bengals have Chase and Mixon. That's a pretty good one, right? The Bills have Stephon Diggs. Niners have five weapons, guys. Scary hours are afoot, folks. Scary hours are afoot. San Francisco gets the win 41-23. They demolish. They take it two. They kick the A double S out of those Seattle Seahawks. Advance to 14-4 on the year and clinch their spot into the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. Slow start, very hot finish, and San Francisco will sit back, kick back, and relax and watch the entire slate of NFL action on Sunday, Vikings and Giants, and Monday night, Cowboys and the Buccaneers. We will know who we will play, or at least which teams we might play, depending on tomorrow's game. Vikings and Giants. Again, this playoffs are going to get crazier and crazier as they go on. You are not going to want to miss a show. That being said, if you are still hoping, many fans were so bummed. I can't go to the game against the Seahawks. I feel bad. Many fans are like shaming other fans for not being able to go. It's asinine. But if you want to go to Levi Stadium, no matter who they play, you are going to want to get a discount, obviously. And use our promo code 49ers Access. 49 E R S A C C E S S at SeatGeek.com. Save yourself $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek.com using our promo code 49 E R S A C C E S S. 49ers Access. $20 off. Look, gas is expensive. It's cold. Tickets are really expensive. It's the playoffs, folks. If you want to save money, use that promo code. Also, you want to get that gear? You want that NFC West championship hat? You want that Brock Purdy jersey? You want that Chris McCaffrey jersey? You know what you want to do? Use our Fanatics link down in the description. Guess what? You can also save some money and get yourself the best Niners gear in the the market. You're not going to want to miss anything on social media as well. You can follow us at 49ers.access is the Instagram. 14,600 followers and counting. Join the Instagram. Continue to follow and support us as well on Twitter. 49ers underscore access. That's what the hot takes, the updates, the stats, everything you want to know about this team is going to be found on our Instagram and our Twitter. And until next time, 
My name is Sterling Bennett. This has been the 49er Access Podcast. Celebrate the victory, folks. We got a win against the Seattle Seahawks and are still alive in the NFL playoffs and hoping three more wins gets us to where we want to be at the top of the mountaintop. I think we can get there, and I believe you think that as well. San Francisco dominated today, despite Seattle having a really good first half. DK Metcalf was great. 10 catches, 136 yards, two touchdowns, a thorn in the side of this defense. Can they clean this up? We will talk about and preview next Saturday's game or Sunday's game, possibly. We'll see. Next week's game later this week. But until next time, my name is Sterling Bennett. Have a wonderful rest of your NFL, NFC, and AFC wildcard weekends. Super wildcard weekends, that is. This has been the 49er Access Podcast, and stay faithful.